G'day guys, welcome back. Just out with one last ride on the CF Moto 800 MT before I have to give it back. Or more like over, it's uh, getting picked up tomorrow at midday and uh, I didn't have any photos of it. Uh, so this bike is, well, it looks like it's about to fall over, but I promise you it's not. Um, <laughs> yeah, she's a good, she's a good bike. It's actually, the styling's really grown on me on this bike. Um, I was initially comparing it to uh, Husqvarna Norden, in my initial thoughts, but the more I've got it, it's sort of, it's not quite there as a Norden competitor, and I don't think if you're going to buy this bike, it's that's what you're after anyway. If you had the money to buy a Husqvarna or a KTM, you'd buy a Husqvarna or a KTM. But this bike, I think, sort of fills a nice gap for riders that aspire to those premium brands and want that engine experience because this bike's powered by the same LC8C. Uh, forgive me, I'm next to a road by the way. So this bike's for riders who aspire to, to the LC8C but don't have the means to drop that extra 10, 30, oh, 10, 20 grand on a KTM or a Husqvarna. It's really, really well specced. It's priced at $14,490 as you see it here. So it's with 19 inch and 17 inch spoke wheels, they're tubeless, which is a bonus. You've also got a skid plate, crash protection, fog lights, LED lighting all round, uh, ride modes, quick shift, uh, you name it. This bike's got it. Heated seat and handlebars as well. Uh, unfortunately in my time with it, I've not been able to do in any real off-road tests and it's not really spec to this bike for doing anything more than a gravel road. Uh, it's got Maxxis Venture tires on them so yeah definitely not spec for riding in the dirt or the gravel um, getting it off this side of the road here is going to be interesting enough with those tires uh, but in terms of riding dynamic it's a pretty cracking bike so we've got a sport mode and a rain mode uh, rain mode really dulls things down so you end up with um, much reduced throttle control, well not throttle control, throttle sensitivity. Uh, the bike's also got an adjustable windscreen uh, as well as those plastic, uh, I want to call them uh, bike busters but they're nowhere near as uh, heavy duty. They're wind deflectors really. So I've done about 500 k's on this bike which is usually around the limit that distributors want you to put on their machines before they sell them on but I've really gotten really really started to um, appreciate this bike for what it is and that is pretty much the best value if you want something that's not lamb spec or can't be compared to a lamb's bike this is really one of the only names in the game if you want a bike that you can tour on you can do a little bit of adventure riding on but not too much uh, the abs is not switchable uh, it's got great performance the engine's great the brakes they're from jay juan um, their cf moto seems to be keen on using their products and they are fantastic i love the brakes on these cf motorbikes they really really punch above their price tag what don't i like about the spy there's not a lot i suppose my main pet peeve is the indicator it's a <laughs> stupid pet peeve of mine but i like an indicator that's got better feel than this uh, and it's a lot like the one that was on the heritage which it got a bit of grit in there or something and it just started to be a bit annoying. Um, as you can see, you've got, a, um, as you can see, you have cruise control as well as standard. Uh, so cruise control, rider modes, quick shifter, plenty of lighting, TFT display, adjustable KYB suspension. When it comes to the suspension, that's sort of where the bike starts to show its price tag, it's KYB, it is fully adjustable, but the rear shock doesn't have any remote preload adjustment, it's that old style C wrench collar to adjust the preload on the rear there, which on a touring bike, that'd be kind of annoying I imagine, if you're, particularly if you like to ride it like this, um, but you like to do the odd tour as well, or take a pillion, um, you're going to have to get in there with a C spanner and adjust that manually, which like hey it's not a big deal at the end of the day but it would be a frustration if you knew say a v-strom which costs around the same amount has that preload adjuster and all those bikes that this bike shares uh its engine with also 
have. So the pillion seat is not heated, only the rider seat, which I can see that as, well, that's just a perk of being a rider, isn't it? In terms of build quality, this is a biggie that people always like to um, knock these Chinese made bikes down on. Build quality is pretty darn good. There's nothing that leaps out at me saying this is gonna fall apart on you. Here's a look at the welds on the frame. The engine, I believe, is a stressed member part of the frame. Uh, you're not going to want to do too much. Well, that's a good alloy skid plate, but you're not going to really want to go bashing over rocks with it, I don't think. It comes standard with a centre stand as well, which will make repairing flats or whatever easier, leaving the chain, all that. It's not touched down. I've ridden it pretty aggressively. Uh, and the center stand's not touched down at all. Now over here, the mud guard, it does give you plenty of space under there if you want to put on some more aggressive tires. Uh, I can fit pretty much, yeah, my hand easily fits in there. Uh, so if you wanted to chuck on some more adventurous tires, you're not going to have any issues there. Uh, you will probably want to find a bit of radiator protection that seems a bit vulnerable. Now, the one thing that might stop me buying one of these bikes, and um, like for the money, I definitely, if you want something that's you want to do adventure touring on or just tour on, uh, for the money, this is going to be hard to beat. Uh, so, one thing to consider is the dealer network. CF Motor is still growing its dealer network here in New Zealand, a lot of its network is still primarily focused on the side-by-sides and ATVs the company's more well known for. Uh, it would be interesting if this shares, say it's oil filter with KTMs, that would make sort of maintenance on the road, uh, particularly for the engine, a little bit easier. But the CF Moto dealer network uh, isn't quite as spread out as, say, Honda or Suzuki in New Zealand. Uh, it's getting there, but that is something to consider. Uh, check out the website, CF Moto. Uh, motorcycles.co.nz I believe it is um, I'll put it up on the thing uh, but honestly this bike has been well it's not been a surprise I knew it would be good but I didn't think it would be this good All right, I know I say a lot that I would have space in a garage for a bike if I had the money for it um, there's no such thing as a terrible motorcycle in my mind but this one is one that I would definitely consider if I had that fourteen thousand four hundred and ninety dollars. Um, it seems to tick a lot of boxes for me. The one thing that's holding me back in my mind from saying I would definitely go and buy this is how other riders are going to perceive it, which is really a stupid thing to um, hold you back from buying a motorcycle. But it's one of those things that's annoyed me about owning my Honda is that. I own a Honda and nobody gives a stuff. Like it's there's no community there. Which, if you wanted to get in on that KTM sort of bandwagon, uh, Husqvarna bandwagon, uh, that is something you'd definitely miss out by saving your ten grand and going for the spike over those. Otherwise, um, yeah, for the money, this is quite possibly the bike to beat in the adventure touring segment. Uh, not exactly sure where I am, but that looks cool. I don't know how clear that's going to be on the uh, camera filming at 1080p, but damn, that's cool. I wonder if more of it up here. Yeah, like a damn, I hope. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, it's pretty cool. That's awesome. How are we going through that? Let's see if Mido is. Here we go, I'm at Uhapuri Power Station. Oh, neat. Car park and elevator. 